What's up, everybody? Pastor Jeff here. Welcome back to Thursday's Theology. This week, we are going to continue exploring the theology found in Phase 2 of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Last week, we talked about Iron Man 3 and how awful it is as a movie. This week, things don't get much easier because we are talking about Thor The Dark World. Yikes. I would say I'm an optimist because I try to find the silver lining in anything. So with this movie, there are a few redeemable qualities, but not many. Last season, we talked about Thor's solo movie in Phase 1 and how Thor's character got off to a very, very rough start. Things unfortunately don't get much better in Thor's second movie, The Dark World. Thor The Dark World introduces us to the Aether, which is super important in the Infinity Saga. But it ends up being this weird floating thing that binds itself to Natalie Portman? It's weird. All that to say, Thor The Dark World does give us a good metaphor for understanding sin and brokenness. Which is what we're going to be discussing in today's episode. Once again, I'm Pastor Jeff. Let's dive in. Alright, Thor The Dark World. Yeesh. Uh, it's a rough movie to watch. Um, I mentioned last season in the Thor episode that Thor looks really plasticky and fake, and they didn't really fix that for the second movie. To, in my opinion, he, he he looked better than he did in the first, but there's still an element of fakeness that I, I can't get over. But anyway, my own personal issues aside, uh, I think that there are some really interesting ideas we can draw out of Thor The Dark World about sin and its impact on humanity. Now granted, it is a little more of a stretch than the other movies, but I think that the Aether is a good example of what happens when we allow ourselves to be taken over by sin. But first, let me back up all the way to the book of Genesis. Now Genesis is the very first book of the Bible, and in the first few chapters we see the creation narrative taking place. Genesis chapter 1 and chapter 2 recount the creation narrative and all the work God put into creating the world. Now chapter 3 of Genesis is where things take a turn for the worse. The serpent convinces Adam and Eve to do the one thing that God had asked them not to do, and that is eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Once they ate, the Bible says, their eyes were opened and they realized they were naked. With this single act, uh, rebellion entered creation and caused Adam and Eve to be banned from the very place God had created them to inhabit. Now, Adam and Eve had, had discovered a power greater than themselves, and it destroyed everything that they had been created to experience. Now what I mean is, is that the power of sin is greater than any one of us can control, and sin ruins everything around us. It destroys anything and everything around it. It gives us a delusion of control, but sin does nothing but ruin everything around us. This is where I think it is connected to the Aether in Thor The Dark World. When asked about the Aether, Odin has this to say about it, and this is quoted from the movie. Long before the birth of light, there was darkness. And from that darkness came the Dark Elves, millennia ago, the most ruthless of their kind, Malekith, sought to transform our universe back into the one of eternal night. Such evil was possible through the power of the Aether, an ancient force of infinite destruction. Odin describes the Aether as an ancient force of infinite destruction. Now, it is a force that seeks to destroy the light and plunge the realms into eternal darkness. Once this force inhabits Jane Foster, she becomes volatile and unpredictable, and she begins to be consumed with destruction and decay. The Aether gives her power, but that power ultimately and slowly begins to destroy her. Now, I'd argue that sin operates the same exact way. Sin seemingly gives us power, but it costs us our lives. Sin can eat at our souls from the inside out, and when Jane is exposed to the Aether, it slowly but surely destroys her. If we allow sin to go unchecked and unforgiven, then it will have the same impact that the Aether did on Jane. It'll kill us. The Apostle Paul, in his letter to the church in Rome, goes to great lengths to make sure that the people understand that sin is to be taken seriously because it has eternal repercussions. Now listen to what Paul says in verses 17 through 22 of Romans 6. He says this, But thanks be to God that, though you used to be slaves to sin, you have come to obey from your heart the pattern of teaching that has now claimed your allegiance. You have been set free from sin and have become slaves to righteousness. I am using an example from everyday life because of your human limitations. But as you used to offer yourselves as slaves to impurity and to everlasting wickedness, so now offer yourselves as slaves to righteousness leading to holiness. When you were slaves to sin, you were free from the control of righteousness. What benefit did you reap at the time from those what benefit did you reap at that time from the things you are now ashamed of? Those things result in death. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the benefit you reap leads to holiness, and the result is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now Paul comes right out and says, What benefit do you reap 
when he asks the church to consider what they gain from giving themselves over to sin. Death. That, that's what the result was. That's what the result of sin is. Paul is adamant in exposing the toxic power that sin has over human reality. Now, he, does, uh, he doesn't shy away from saying that sin leads to death. There is no in-between. See, sin leads to death. Period. Now that we're at the end of this episode, I realize that Thor The Dark World actually has a lot more going on in it than I thought. But it still doesn't make it a good movie. Um, it brings out some vital points about the power of sin, but it's still not a good movie. And there you have it. Thanks for joining me for this week's episode of Thursday's Theology. If you missed last week's episode of Thursday's Theology and want to catch up, click the link here to watch it. If you want to know more about theology, head over to thursdaystheology.com. As always, I'm Pastor Jeff. Thanks for joining me. And remember, theology doesn't always have to be difficult. It is simply the study of who God is. Take care. We'll see you next week.